perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, series of webinar series on mechanics of materials. Uh, today we have uh, uh, our speaker, Professor Changcheng Chen from Tsinghua University. Professor Chen is uh, currently a professor and head of the Department of Engineering Mechanics at Tsinghua University. He works in the area of uh, constitutive modeling, fracture, strength, and impact behavior of solids, multifunctional materials, and mechanical metamaterials. So he has published to over 130 papers in international journals. And so Professor Changqing did his PhD from uh, Xi'an Jiatong University in China, and then went to do his postdoctoral work at Cambridge University uh, uh, from 1997 to 2001, and then returned to uh, China to work as a faculty or professor in Xi'an Jiatong University. And later he moved to Tsinghua where he is currently heading the Department of Engineering Mechanics. Professor Chen is also uh, uh, an editor of International Journal of Mechanics, Associate Editor of International Journal of Mechanical Sciences from 2015 to 2020. And he's also Associate Editor-in-Chief of Acta Mechanica Sinica. He's also a recipient of uh, 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 several awards. Uh, some of them being the, uh, one of them is Leaders in Innovative Science and Technology from Ministry of Science and Technology in China uh, in 2018. And National Prize for Natural Sciences, uh, State Council of China in 2012, and China Prize for Young Scientists and Engineers, China Association for Science and Technology in 2009, and many more. I think with that short introduction, I request uh, Professor Chen uh, to deliver his uh, talk. And one more uh, announcement, if you have any questions, uh, uh, you can uh, reserve them until the end. However, if you want to ask during the session, you can type it in the Q&A session, and then I will probably interrupt Professor Chen if that question needs to be asked at that point of time. Otherwise, we will reserve all the questions towards the end of the session. Thank you very much. Professor Chen, floor is yours. Yeah. Okay. Uh, first, uh, I would like to thank uh, Professor Rajana and uh, Patra, and also Professor Basu, for inviting me to give the talk on static sultans in mechanical made materials. Uh, my name is Chan Chin Cheng from Tsinghua University in Beijing, uh, China. Uh, today, uh, I will first give a brief background of this study. Metal material is kind of material engineer to help periodic microstructures. The property are usually governed by the morphology instead of the constitutional material of the microstructure. And most importantly, they have unexpected properties. The concept of a metal material dates back in 1968, when a Russian physicist was like uh, actually conceived the idea uh, of a photonic uh, crystal. And uh, after 30 years, uh, in 1999 and uh, 2000, uh, professors Pendry and Smith so demonstrated in experiment uh, that photonic uh, crystals are uh, indeed uh, have balanced uh, gap and uh, have negative permissivity. Uh, in around 2000, uh, a group of scientists from Hong Kong University of Science and Technology that actually uh, closely uh, followed the idea of a photonic crystal that you Biased acoustic uh, crystal with uh, local resonant magnetism. For such a uh, uh, crystal, basically, they are able to generate a very short uh, wavelength compared compare, uh, to the largest uh, constant. In recent uh, five to six years, people uh, started to uh, study the uh, static instead of the wave problem of such a material we call a mechanical material. Uh, say, for example, the stiffness of strains uh, and uh, the toughness. Here, basically shows us an example of acoustic uh, uh, metal material. So the figure on the left uh, is what I just mentioned, uh, devised by Professor Liu uh, from Hong Kong and uh, in 2000. And uh, uh, about 
10 years later, the people are able to uh, develop a water clock. Basically, this figure showing here, if there is a steel load here in the source of wave, and then you can see the wave propagation behind the load, you can see clear difference uh, here from here. But if we uh, put uh, a, a good material surrounding the steel load, and then you can see basically uh, the wave propagate along this way is very similar to this one. So you don't see much difference, uh, this much disturb the wave propagation compared to part here and here. Now people uh, actually even go one step further uh, to, uh, to invent topological phenomenal crystal. Uh, as we know, for wave propagation, usually the can propagate in two directions. For this uh, crystal, basically you, you uh, excite at this point, you would expect uh, will propagate clockwisely and uh, anti-clockwise. But for this particular phenomenal crystal, actually will can only propagate uh, clockwise. So here uh, is an experiment uh, demonstration about what I mentioned. So it will basically travel clockwise instead of anti-clockwise. So in recent years, uh, people uh, became interested in so the mechanical property of such a metal material. We call it mechanical metal materials. We are concerned about the stiffness, uh, strength, and uh, uh, toughness, and so on. So here is an example uh, of uh, Astralite, Archer Steve, Michael Regis, actually published here in 2011 uh, in Science. Uh, Showed uh, actually the fabricated uh, architecture uh, element. So basically, the hierarchical structure, if you see uh, the structure shown here, a microscope, so you can see the size in the millimeter to centimeter uh, range. However, the tube, uh, the nickel tube, the diameter tube is on the micro to uh, millimeter. And if you look at the silver thickness, is around 100 nanometer. The density of the micrologies is, is about 0.9 microgram per cubic centimeter, which you can see uh, is, uh, let's say, at the density of hair, which is about 1.8. Most of the interesting thing is if we look at the modulus here, change the relative modulus of the material uh, as a function of relative density. Usually, we are expecting the relative modulus is proportional, uh, you see, has a power law function of the relative density. Uh, a uh, goes to A, usually A in the range between one and three. Because the relative density here is less than one, so a big value of A indicated a, a soft uh, material. So, because Say the more the modulus will be lower. So usually, if A goes to one, it's good, but if it goes to three, it's not so good. So for this particular material, you can see what the other material uh, bending dominators like foams, uh, you are expect A is about three, but uh, for this lattice, uh, micro lattice, and you can see uh, the A is about two, or A will go to one. So that means it's very stiff. A microlitis. In addition to stiffness, people are also able to uh, produce very strong microlitis. And again, here sigma is the strength, and the sigma s is the strength of the material, and uh, is again is a function of the relative density goes to power m. So here you can see m is about one point two and one point six, and again uh, is close. When you're not too far away from one, that means the material is quite good, it's quite strong. And uh, about three years ago, uh, now people are even able to uh, produce mechanical metal material with the stiff approaching the theoretical Hansen Stuckman upper band. That means the actually approach up limit. 
So uh, as we know from the theory of Hashim Stigman band, you are not able to get um, material with stiffness higher than the band. So this, this kind of material is very promising. And uh, in addition to that, we can actually uh, find this kind of material is, is lastly isotopic, which is another uh, property which people are very interested. So before going to details of my talk, I will give a brief uh, introduction of solitary waves because this is closely related to what I'm going to talk because I'm going to talk uh, static uh, solitaries in mechanical metal material. In 1834, uh, Russell actually, uh, his uh, uh, engineer in Scotland, he loaded a force along the United Canada and found a highly localized whale in the river. And uh, with the whale traveled without this basin, which is very strange. And uh, such kind of uh, whale called a solitary whale and uh, has a, a very stable uh, deformation pattern and to behave like a, a particle. So uh, here is a, a picture uh, taken in 1995. Uh, again, Scotland tried to reproduce uh, such a, a solid wave. And uh, now people from mathematical uh, now realize this kind of uh, wave actually can be described by the famous nonlinear uh, equation KDV equation, and here gives the uh, solution. Now, uh, uh, people are able, able to make mechanical solid wave. Here uh, is uh, an example uh, published in uh, PNS uh, in uh, 2014. And you, you can clearly see the wave probably like a particle. So this is uh, a uh, mechanical solitary wave. As uh, the talk of this theory is on mechanics of materials, so people uh, in this field are always concerned about the failure of the solids or the failure of the material. And we know in most cases, failure uh, by actually the material fail by localized deformation, say for a low carbon steel, if you, you load the intention, you are able to observe such a leaking behavior. If you compress uh, for a, a middle to high carbon steel, you will see uh, a failure uh, in the form of shear band. If a crack is present, you will see crack actually grows along these two directions. So anyway, you will uh, see high... Uh Yes. There is a question. Uh, they're asking, yeah. can you repeat, could you repeat the length scales? Arun Nagarwal is asking, could you repeat the length scales in the bottom of the bottom figure for the microstructure? What is the length scale? For, for which one? Uh, I suppose uh, in this figure, the bottom slide? microstructures you are showing, no? For the 2016 Zhao Chen, for, because they didn't say which one. This yeah. one? Yeah, okay. uh, Mr. Arun Agarwal, uh, can you please mention which figure are you talking about, the microstructure? Yeah, few slides away. I'm sorry. I think he was talking about few slides away. I just saw that message. I'm sorry. Okay. So Okay, then so maybe we will speak? get back to it when uh, towards the end of the... Yeah, in the beginning, he's asking. Oh, but in anyway, the beginning? Yeah, yeah. Maybe I think you can continue. Maybe towards the end, uh, yeah. we will take up that question. I will keep looking at the question. Sorry for that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, we talk about the localized deformation, uh, intention, and uh, for the crack, for the naking, and, and uh, actually, um, the compression, say, for a composite, you load it in this way and share it in this way, you always observe, take a bath, and also informs and in fiber network materials, we also observe highly localized deformation. So in addition to conventional materials, in uh, mechanical made materials, uh, we also observe buckle, buckle induced phase transition showing in this slide, I published by many high profile groups 
around the world and it's also showing highly localized deformation. Now, because we know localized deformation are usually very sensitive to stochastic imperfections, that means for any imperfection, to so change the deformation pattern, to so change the load, to crack the, the uh, critical loading. So that means uh, when we design a structure, we have to, to put a bigger uh, number of, we have to use a number of redundant material to try to compensate the imperfection. Because uh, usually we don't uh, know exactly the quality of imperfections that can either be induced during manufacturing process or by uh, in service process. So the challenge here, can we design, can we actually control the localized deformation? If we can do that, basically we mean in the future, we can design high efficient uh, structure. So now we are going to a, a typical a cellular mechanical metamaterial try to answer the question I just raised. So here is a, a cellular mechanical metamaterial I'm going to show. So the material basically consists of uh, elliptical hole of dual size. You have, a, you can see here is a, a big elliptical hole and here is a small elliptical hole. So actually arranged uh, in such a way that uh, actually perpendicular to each other and it's uh, periodically arranged uh, on the space. So here showing a unit cell of the metamaterial and uh, we have solar key dimension is parameters. So here is kappa, is uh, the ratio between A2 and A1, T bar is actually the, uh, T is the ligament width of showing here and A1 e, and B1 a2 and B2 are the semi axis of the uh, bigger elliptic hole and the small e elliptic hole. So remember this uh, parameter kappa is very important because we are con consider this one is uh, play a dominant role in what we are going to show you. So we are uh, using, we define C is given by this parameter. So say Kx1, we call C cap C is one. If kappa is not equal to one, then C is zero. So now I'm going to show you first the final simulation of this kind of uh, mechanical material and uh, uniform compression in the vertical direction. So the material is made of uh, a rubber. We use a monitoring consider model. Uh, so we run experiment in actual tension and uh, we can calibrate the material parameter C10 and C01. And uh, we use, because we consider this a two dimensional case, we use four noted plane strain element with reduced uh, integration technique. So remember, this is a static loading. So we use quasi static compression. So strain rate is very low is 10 to minus five per second. So now I'm going to show you the simulated results. This figure showing the, actually the strain response, uh, the, uh, the function of y. Y is the applied uh, strain uh, in the vertical direction, and the Y X is the responsible uh, strain in the uh, transverse direction in the x direction. So basically, minus y x over y is the Poisson's ratio. Now, if we look at the uh, different parameter for kappa x uh, 0.5, here is the blue, is the green one. So you, you have positive Poisson's ratio. For uh, kappa uh, uh, equal, oh, I'm sorry, here is a mistake. Kappa x1 uh, is a address one you have almost zero Poisson's ratio. And uh, the blue one is cover equals 1.5. So here's a mistake. Uh, you, we have next to Poisson's ratio. If we look at the uh, uh, normalized uh, stress as a function of strain, now you will see for 
kappa not equal to one, we have a uh, monotonic uh, increase of the stress as a, the increase of the strain. However, for kappa is about one, you will really see a peak and here. So now we can plot a phase diagram in terms of A1 and A2. Remember, uh, kappa is defined the ratio between A2 and A1. So for kappa greater than one, now we have negative Poisson ratio. And uh, for kappa less than one, we have a positive Poisson ratio. What is most interesting is this one. Kappa is about one, it's actually the rate like here, we have Poisson ratio is close to zero. Now, if we look at the uh, deformed shape corresponding to the stress coefficient about here, so it, the strain is about 10%. Now, you will see very uh, uh, striking uh, phenomena for kappa not equal to one, change for the first two cases, the deformed configuration is uniform. So you have uniform the deformed configuration. However, for kappa is about one, now you have basically, you can see we have highly localized deformation pattern that are really and actually evenly spaced because the space here is almost about here. Now, we have a question. Why we, for kappa equals to one, uh, we have such a, a unexpected uh, response. So, because what the uniform deformation we say is trivial, is what we expect, uh, and the last one is not what, you, what we expect. So we want to understand what happened here. So we want to understand the topologically non-trivial metal behavior. So we run an experiment. So now you will see uh, here is the rotation for each element. Okay, so now you can see in experiment, we indeed observe a highly localized deformation that are really are distributed. If we can pair with finite element simulation, you can see good, uh, very good uh, agreement. But uh, why can we observe and predict such behavior? Now we try to understand the observe, the predict uh, phenomena. So we first talk about uh, a one-dimensional theoretical model. First, we are talking about a, a new level model. Uh, in 1992, they actually, when he uh, investigated the effective property of uh, a composite with uh, a circular void, he simplified this kind of composite uh, as uh, actual stiffness K, shear stiffness Cs, and the bending stiffness C1. So by doing that, then he uh, is able to, he was able to calculate the effective uh, stiffness. So uh, following his idea, we actually, basically, we simplify our unit cell with a strut. So again, we have actual stiffness. So we look at it in this way. We have actual stiffness, we shear it, we have shear stiffness, and we bend it, and we have bending stiffness. So now we have a number of hinge. We use spring for this unit cell. And now we can have simplified uh, load spring uh, unit cell. So we have uh, tensile stiffness K, and we have shear C1, C2, and uh, we also have CS. C1, C2, sorry, is high for bending. Now for this unit cell, for this complicated unit cell, now we can simplify to such a load spring unit cell. So basically, now we have theta naught is actually the angle based from the vertical direction. And we have the spring here for this simplified model. So we can define H, okay, this is showing here, H naught is the length of the bar, and theta is the rotation of this inclined bar, and theta zero is actually the initial inclination. So alpha is actually the internal rotation of the unit cell. So once we have this unit cell, 
we can calculate simply calculate the energy of the unit cell in terms of the spring and the stress. And then we can everything shown here. Uh, we can have C1, C2, K. But the actually uh, functions of the geometry of the unit cell, I will talk about later. So when we put what the, uh, uh, the unit cell, the load spring unit cell together, so I say, 1D model, they basically now we simplified this uh, real structure as a load spring model, and then we come down to a number of mass spring model. So we have the interaction energy between the unit cell, and we have the effect on cell potential for each uh, cell. So now we have the total energy. Uh, of the system by summation, what's the interaction energy and the home side potential. So basically, uh, we, we already defined everything uh, shown here. So for equilibrium, so we can calculate because there's only one part of alpha A, okay? Alpha A is actually the rotation of the ends, say the ends, uh, the internal rotation of the ends and unit cell. Say we can come down out with this uh, equilibrium uh, equation. So P effective is actually uh, uh, the potential we will discuss in detail here in this slide. Now we want to solve this equation to see what happened to this 1D spring chain model. Now, first we can see the a special case of monostable potential P effective. So this corresponds to sigma zero is not equal to one, is not to equal to zero. So basically kappa is not equal to one. So for this particular case, so the uh, potential is actually uh, defined. And uh, then we, for this case, we can calculate the potential, which is monostable. Usually we cannot get the analytical solution for this uh, equation. But uh, we can consider a trivial solution. Basically, we assume, so all rotations of the unit cell uh, are equal. So basically we have uh, alpha one equals alpha two equal to alpha a. So equal to a constant. Then we sub substitute this uh, uh, solution uh, into this equation we come out of C. So basically that means for all unit cells to define the default by the same home amount of rotation, which is given here, G1, G2, and G4 are all determined, already determined prime. So now we, for the two examples we showed before, we showed the fundamental uh, simulated results for kappa equal to 0.5 and uh, kappa equal to 1.5. We actually, uh, we show the rotation for each element, for each unit cell. You can see uh, the line, the dot, the broken line, and uh, the dot, uh, actually the dash dot line, uh, actually agree uh, with the theoretical model. Uh, so actually here is actually the final element, here are theoretic, you can see the actually agree with each other quite well. So basically the 1D model, the 1D uh, chain model actually can predict, the final element predict uh, uh, deformation. Now we can uh, consider another case, uh, zero, zero equal to one, uh, that's kappa equal to one, or top zero equal to zero, kappa equal to one, C zero equal to one. So, sorry. So, C zero equal to zero and kappa uh, equal to one. Now, for this particular case, we calculate uh, P cell. Now, we are able to get the potential, which you can see we have two minimum. So, it's a, a double potential. And uh, for this particular case, it's uh, the structure is bistable. Okay, uh, now for this uh, equation, 
we are not able to get, in general, we are not able to get uh, each solution because it's very complicated. And uh, in the continuum limit, now we are getting a continuum equation, uh, reduce this discrete one to this continuum one, which is a very famous nonlinear uh, current golden equation or KG equation, people already have the analytical solution. So we are now able to get the solution. So the question is why the potential is a single wire and it's double wire. So basically, uh, we actually get the solution and we have the condition and we can see if capital theta effective is positive and uh, V theta is uh, a double wire potential. Otherwise, it's a, a monostable uh, potential. So now, as I said, for this particular uh, equation, now we are able to get its analytical solution here, showing here, and uh, basically by changing the parameter, you will see, okay, here showing for different parameter M, yeah, that's the only parameter we have, so you will see, see different uh, solutions. Now we compare the solution, say for M equal to 0.8, now when the, for M equal to 0.45, with the experiment and with the final M simulations, you can see the actually agree uh, each other very well. So the red line is a theory, and the square is actually simulation, final M simulation, and the dot is from experiment and basically showing, okay, the observed localized deformation is actually the solution of the current golden uh, equation. So in the form of the kink and anti kink, we call this kind of localization uh, a static solitude because this deformation is a static deformation. Okay. So the question, why people hasn't observed such an unusual behavior before? I see I the main reason is the specimen size is not big enough. So if, say, in the, in the transverse direction, in the horizontal direction, we have four uh, unit cells. Say you uh, actually cannot observe localized deformation. When the size increase, increase from four to eight, now you are able to observe one size, one localized deformation zone. And if you increase the size further and further, now you are able to observe actually highly localized deformation zone. And actually, the, uh, actually the regularly distributed. So here is an example for a small size. Now you see you only observe uniform deformation, which is actually agree with our uh, simulation. So we come to, uh, uh, we summarize the size effect on the localized deformation. You can see when the specimen size, say, is less than five, or is done here, you will get a kick-free zone. So basically, if you want to observe highly localized deformation, you have to use very big uh, specimen, at least big enough. So now we come to several geometric parameters, K, C, S, C1, and C2. I haven't talked about the details. I'm going to a little bit down to how to get the parameters in the previous uh, theoretic model. Basically, as I mentioned, K is the uh, tension if we load it uh, as a motor joint here, we can calculate the stress as a function of displacement. Then we are able to uh, determine K as a function of what parameters, say A1, uh, B1, and A2, B2. Then we are able to get uh, the formula for K in terms of the geometry of the uh, mechanical metal material we just discussed. And here, actually, the solid line is this uh, formula, basically shown here, and the dot 
is a set of symbols are actually follow a uh, finite limit uh, results. You can see basically that the uh, fitting is quite good. And similarly, we can calculate uh, the shear stiffness and the bending stiffness in terms of the geometric parameters of the metal material. So now we want to go one step further. We want to verify the theory because, as I mentioned previously, we already uh, compared the final limit and the experiment result with our theory. But now we are going to a different uh, geometry, set of geometry. We want to say, OK, we have to check the predictive the predictive capability of the developer model uh, by using a different set of geometry parameters. So uh, basically, again, you can see here is a theory, and here is an uh, experiment. Uh, again, you will see so actually uh, we are able to achieve quite a good agreement. Now, another interesting thing I want to see, show is that because, as uh, I mentioned before, the localized differentiation zone is actually uh, a solution of the uh, Crane Gordon equation uh, in the form of King, and King. So it's kind of uh, solid. And we know solid is usually insensitive to defects. Uh, so if we change the uh, loading, say, for example, here is a, a stress as a straight curve I already showed before. So if we look at the deformation pattern and the dot marks along the curve, you actually see different deformed configurations. But another to say, we can see the localized deformation are almost remain unchanged. So that means, okay, the localized deformation is not sensitive to the strain. Because here, strain can serve as a defect. Can serve. Actually, we will show later on, indeed, this kind of uh, localization is uh, uh, static solid and is insensible to defect. So now the question is then, how to generate the one-dimensional solution model? Can we produce? Other solitudes, other static solitudes. So, what is the key to general static solitude? So, we are proposed a general framework. As I mentioned before, for the 1D chain model, we have this uh, solution. So, for this solution to show localized deformation, we have to have P is a potential to be bistable. So for the bistable, we've already said the uh, capital theta still must be uh, positive. Otherwise, this one is, uh, uh, is a single wear potential. In addition to that, we must, uh, uh, we have already get the expression was capital theta still uh, is showing here. So basically, remember data is actually the vertical displacement of the reloaded uh, in the, uh, we are imposed upon the metal material. So basically, to have a double wave pressure, so the delta must uh, be in this range. We can simply calculate from here. So first, we must have double wave pressure. And the second, we must have very strong coupling between two unit cells. If the coupling between two unit cells is weak, basically you are able to, you're not able to get highly uh, regular uh, localized deformation. You get the randomly distributed localization zone. So now with uh, the argument we propose to you here, now we come to first different uh, structure. So before we show the structure as a, a elliptical hole, and here we have another hole. It's not elliptical, it's a circular hole, but 
or also satisfy this uh, kind of uh, conditions. And again, you will see we can predict, we can predict and measure very similar behavior. And we have experiment simulation and theory for this particular uh, geometry. And uh, we also did design a, a, a square holes and we, again, we have the uniform distributed localized deformation zone. So basically it means we are able to, uh, following the general framework, we are able to uh, get static solitude, in which is independent of the, the shape. So, and uh, we have this different, uh, different, actually different uh, metal material, and uh, we are also now design a uh, two-dimensional. Here, basically, two, one dimension, because you can see uh, the deformation pattern is actually independent of, of, of Y in the vertical direction. So, one possible application of the static solid is that maybe we can design mechanical beads showing here. So we put two different mechanical metal material. We say showing we can have a localized deformation. We can have a static solid We put them together. So we have state one and we can have state two, another. Two. So we say this is zero and zero is one. So we put them together, then we can have mechanical bands. And uh, in addition to 1D, we can also design 2D. So we actually, we already, here I only show the experiment at the simulation. We have already done the experiment. So the new paper should come out very shortly. So here I come to the conclusion of my uh, talk tonight. So uh, basically we have we used uh, cellular mechanical metal material to try to show positive, negative, and zero poisonous ratio. And we can have homogeneous and highly ordered localized deformation. And most importantly, we are interested in the highly localized deformation showing so actually in the form of a static uh, solid because we uh, developed a one dimensional theory model, which is showing uh, so it's a cron uh, equation and uh, the uh, actual solution as uh, in the form of uniform deformation corresponding to trivial solution or ordered uh, localized deformation with the best stable potential. So as I mentioned, uh, one possible application is that when, if we can generate the idea of static solid, then we can, we may be able to get to design mechanic uh, B. So here is my talk. Uh, I, I would like to thank uh, my collaborators and my PhD student Ya Fei Zhang and Yu Jie Wang actually what the uh, most of the work I show you here are uh, actually by then. And my collaborator, my colleague, Bo and Chen Sui and Qinghua, Gai and Louis. And uh, this project is funded by the Natural Science Foundation of China. And uh, if you are interested in the details, you can go to two of our papers published last year, one in Nature Communications, another in mechanical physics solids, uh, thank you all for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Chen Qing, uh, for a very uh, engaging talk. Uh, so very interesting work. So we have a couple of questions. I think uh, I let uh, the speakers, uh, the, the audience ask the questions by themselves. Uh, uh, I'm letting uh, Dr. Pika Srivastava, I'm allowing you to speak. So you can ask the question directly to Professor Chen. Yeah. Yeah, you can speak now, Dr. Vikas. Uh, yeah, yeah, just soon. Uh, Dr. Shen, 
you thank you very thank you very much for uh, such a nice presentation on meta materials uh, yeah uh, i wanted to know that what are the processes by which we can make such materials uh, i understand that uh, additive manufacturing and stereolithography are the two processes by which we can do it but are there other other processes by which we can do we can make such materials oh yes actually we use 3d printing to get yeah. this kind of material okay uh, then in 3d printing uh, the scale of uh, elements you show that uh, you have tubes of nanometers uh, thickness but the 3d printing is limited with the powder particle size so oh, is so yeah. you are talking about the very first slice right not the one so that is the temperature can take about 3 degrees c so yeah i am going to like you know okay so you are talking about the size here right yeah oh yeah. this work is not done by my group uh, dr vikas can you please mute your microphone once i think we are getting a okay i think just a moment yeah yeah now you can answer oh. Yes, uh, this work is not done by my group. Uh, people uh, in, in the states to produce uh, to make material, you can see the size is around uh, 100 micro. This is not done by 3D printing. It's not possible because the resolution of 3D printing for metals uh, cannot achieve such a high resolution. But uh, for uh, my study, the size I can show you here. So you can see A1 is actually three millimeter, right? A1 is actually the size shown here. So for this kind of metal material, yes, we can use 3D print. Okay. Uh, thank you for the uh, uh, answer. The second question I had, uh, like, uh, if you have a big material, big meta materials, and you have proposed a very good uh, logic that like how globally the material behaves, uh, but uh, I suspect that if we are uh, using a large size, and if we are uh, trying to compress it or doing tensile uh, deformation. Is there a possibility that locally somewhere some elements are behaving randomly, and finally they may end up with uh, destroying the whole uh, system or reducing the properties? Is it possible? Oh yes, I agree with you. Say for example, the size of the specimen is infinitely long in the horizontal direction. Then basically you are expecting. Uh, more, or more or less uniform deformation. Uh, the log, high localized deformation here is actually related to the microstructure and uh, also related to the boundary condition shown here. Because for a very large size, for example, say, actually we simulate using fundamental method because we're not able to run the experiment for very large specimen, but for when I'm simulation, we can do that. So indeed, as uh, expected, and we are actually get uniform deformation. Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Chanchik. And uh, uh, I think you have answered the other question. What was the length scale? If you go to very first slide, there was another speaker. Uh, another uh, uh, person from audience asked the length scales. Can you go to the very first uh, slide? I think that there you probably have answered. Okay. Uh, you the one uh, uh, when we, while you are answering the previous question, you have shown uh, one. Yeah. Can you go back uh, previous slide? This one. Yes. Yes. Here, I think he wa he wanted to know what is the uh, length scale. Yeah, you can see the length scale showing here is two millimeter. Bottom figure, length scale in the bottom figure. 
that is 100 mm oh, no, this one no 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 previous one the one that you are showing before this one no not next because here length scales are visible yeah here the bottom figure length scale that's 100 nanometers yes or 100 100 mm. Mm. yeah here is oh. 200 micrometers a oh, micrometers okay i think that was the question okay are there any other questions from the audience uh, you can please type your questions in q and a and then uh, so that i can pass on your questions to uh, the speaker Uh, Ratna, I have a question. Yes, yeah. yes, please go ahead, uh, Sumit. Yeah, uh, uh, the final idea that uh, you proposed uh, using this as a mechanical uh, logic uh, device, mm -hmm. uh, but um, the zero and one can be taken only by particular uh, particular regions in the material. So. Uh, Every every part of the material cannot take uh, zero or one. Isn't that a problem? Oh yes, because uh, we put a different uh, material. You you can see here. So we are assembled together. So basically showing okay here is one element. Here is another element. So uh, so, we, so the arrangement of zeros and ones that you can get uh, depends on how you have arranged the material. Is that yeah. correct? Yes, that's correct. And it also depending on the, the loading you apply. So basically, if you load it this way and load it that way, then you can see you have different uh, pattern. Okay, okay, okay. Right, right, thank you. Okay, thank you. Yep. Are there any other questions? I don't see anything in the Q and A session, uh, and also not even the yeah. For other applications, that is other than mechanical applications, it won't be macro length scale in my in the microstructure in the initial applications. Mm -hmm. So the question is uh, uh, for other applications other than me mechanical applications, uh, it won't be macro length scale in the microstructure in the initial applications. Yes, yes. So the size would be much uh, smaller for real okay. application. Mm -hmm. But uh, because uh, this kind of material and the design, I'm, I'm only showing the design uh, principle. And, mm -hmm. uh, so if for you want to implement it for real application, so we must try to reduce the size. Okay. All right. I think uh, that's all. I, let me also look in the chart window. I think uh, that's all I have. Uh, the question, uh, the, so far, the questions uh, from the audience. I think I, I would like to take this opportunity uh, to thank you very much because I know that it is late, very late in the night, and you have uh, accommodated our request uh, to have our seminar on time as per the regular time. Thank you very much for accommodating this. And I really appreciate your uh, uh, effort and uh, coming forward to give this lecture. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank my you. pleasure. Thanks a lot. Good night to you. And uh, Good night. thanks for, uh, for speaking to us at such a late hour. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor, for inviting me. Thank you, all the participants, for uh, joining us today. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.